This youngster, sitting on Melvin Crowner's lap in 1932, grew up to be our Jack Crowner. He fell in love with broadcasting before his voice changed, singing with the Lansing, Michigan Children's Choir, the GM Juniors, Sundays on WJIM Lansing. And did you know that Jack can dance? Here's Jack developing his moves as a youngster, second from the right, a tap dancer in 1940. On the farm at DeWitt, just north of Lansing, Jack and his younger brother milked the Holsteins and raised chickens and Yorkshire hogs while Dad worked in a defense plant. He became an Eagle Scout and won with his heifer in the 4-H show at the St. John's Fair and later showed this champion hog at the Michigan State Fair. Jack Croner was featured as Youth of the Week at 17. It says besides the farm work, he's also a 4-H youth leader on the livestock judging team, plays first base in baseball and center on the varsity basketball team, plays trumpet in the school band, has his own seven-piece dance band, plays piano for relaxation, and has decided to major in broadcasting at Michigan State. Michigan State Extension Radio Editor Howard Hass soon discovered Crowner and put him to work with morning and noon farm programs on the college station WKAR AM and FM. When WKAR TV went on the air, Jack helped produce an evening farm program. Upon being selected to spend six months in New Zealand on the International Farm Youth Exchange in 1953, Jack was asked by Everett Mitchell to report for NBC's National Farm and Home Hour. Another iffy in New Zealand was Sue Terry, a Kentucky 4-H'er. Jack is lower right and Sue is just above him on this iffy newsletter cover. Now we know where Jack met Sue, who eventually became Mrs. Crowner. Upon graduation from Michigan State in 1954, Jack was commissioned by the Air Force, assigned to the Alaska Air Command. Lieutenant Crowner and his bride soon moved to Anchorage, an Elmendorf Air Base. Brenda, the first of Jack and Sue's three children, was born there. Crowner served 33 years in the Kentucky Air Guard and was president of the Kentucky National Guard Association in 1977. In October 1957, Jack joined WAVE Radio and TV, Louisville, Kentucky, as assistant to farm director Shirley Anderson and took over when Anderson retired. WAVE-TV operated a demonstration farm and broadcast a one-hour program live from the farm each Saturday. It took a crew of 17, and the show was rehearsed three hours before airtime. Here's the way Jack reported the markets in those early TV days. WAVE radio coverage was limited, so sponsors asked Jack to start a radio network. WAVE management approved, and Jack established his Farm Service Radio Network in 1965, serving stations in southern Indiana, Kentucky, and part of Tennessee. Jack Croner attended his first farm broadcaster meeting in Chicago in 1951 when it was NARFD, the National Association of Radio Farm Directors. In 1967, he was editor of CHATS, Secretary Treasurer in 68, Vice President in 69, and NAFB President in 1970. The Crowners left Louisville in 1975 so Jack could work at sister station WMT in Iowa. They returned to Louisville in 1976 when he became Executive Secretary of the Kentucky Cattlemen's Association. A TV farm program was hosted by Jack on Lexington's WLEX-TV and he continued his farm service radio network. For a time in the 90s, Croner worked with Alan Aldrich on WHAS Louisville and the 45 station Kentucky Ag Network. During that period, he dropped Kentucky stations from his farm service radio network. Family is important to Jack's life. Here's the Croner clan in 1968, and this is a more recent family portrait. Fishing and hunting also has a high priority. He started fishing early with young Mark, and they hunted pheasants. 
Deer hunting in Michigan is an annual ritual with Jack and his brother. He claims to be a homebody, but Jack has brought reports from 36 countries, Europe. Here he is in Germany with Iowa reporter Don Mum and helping tear down the Berlin Wall. He's been to Asia, twice to South America and twice to the old USSR with Ken Root. Red Square, USSR. Uh, still as many people as we saw before, people coming from all over the various republics all over the world. He has met with U.S. presidents, too, and with famous Kentuckian Colonel Sanders. Jack has become a celebrity himself. Here, the whole family presents the Jack Crowner Cup at a race at Churchill Downs. Got 38, 38 in a bid. Now give me, give me 4,000. Who gave me 4,000? I got four. Holy cow, I'm getting warm. <laughs> Woo! I got 4,000, that equals the record. Can you imagine running the price up to $118,000 for one champion country ham? Oh sure, he had talent, but he also had the help in 2000 from Kentucky's Miss America, Heather French. Awards come to a man like Jack from all over, but he's perhaps most proud of being voted by his peers as NAFB Farm Broadcaster of the Year in 1990. Grand old opera humorist Jerry Clower put it right when he said, oh, And I love you, you a good one. You one of the best farm broadcasters in the world. And I want your, oh, I want your folks to, oh, I run around with the Orion Samuelsons of the world. And I know who's the heavyweights in this business, and you one of the best is. You really are. 